what's good y'all it's your boy ross back at again with another video so i just finished watching nxt stand and deliver part one or night one and uh i enjoyed it uh it was it was definitely enjoyable uh for me personally uh i will say this there are a lot of wrestlers i wasn't familiar with so i was kind of you know trying to catch up on you know who these wrestlers are and you know the storylines that they're involved in so if i may not i may not know all the wrestlers names involved in the matches and stuff i try the best to keep along with the announcers and the commentary team so my notes is kind of extensive i took plenty of notes uh but i'm gonna try to do my best but ultimately from just what i was seeing I enjoyed it. It was very enjoyable for night one, and um, it definitely got me excited for night two. So I'm going to go down the list of matches in order, talk about them uh, from the notes that I got, and uh, just give my thoughts and opinions on things uh, to the best of my ability. Because like I said, I haven't really too much been watching NXT. I've only been keeping up with like a few storylines. So let's get right into it. Pete Dunn versus Kushida. Uh, basically, from what I can tell, the match was based upon uh, who's the best in-ring technical wrestler in the world. Uh, they started off with a lot of technical wrestling, which I enjoy. I like seeing those type of wrestling matches start off that way. It really shows like the, the technical prowess from like wrestlers when they start doing different holds and grabs and countering those holds and grabs. I always like those. I like matches when they start off like that. Just from a technical standpoint, it, it to me, it gives that legitimate feeling to wrestling. Um, Pete Dunn uh, offense, it always looks brutal. It's always looked brutal since I first got introduced to him a few years back. The, the way he's all about like, bending the like the the digits or well, they call them digits but not bending your fingers back it always makes me cringe so him just being brutal in that sense of always manipulating joints I always like it just makes me cringe because it looks so painful but it also looks believable um they both end up reversing a lot of their moves towards the beginning of the match showing their wrestling abilities uh the stomps uh by Pete Dunne to Kushida on the elbows when they're exposed like he like he'll have his hand like this and he'll just stomp on his on his elbow just looks so nasty like i i love it i mean i love it in the sense of like i said it looks so like you know what I'm saying brutal and and painful and it looks like that would be something a, a person would really do in a potential fight just start you know, smashing on someone's elbows. Well, especially for Pete Dunne, it just fits his character as the bruiser weight. So I, it, it just gives that realism feel that I always like when it comes to wrestling. Um, the hoverboard lock from the top rope was pretty cool. Uh, Kushida applying the hoverboard rock, uh, lock to the to, uh, from the top rope. He slung him down off the top rope, and then he still had it applied on the mat, I thought that was nice. Uh, Kushida switches the hoverboard lock uh, from both arms to prevent uh, Pete Dunne from reaching the rope. So Pete Dunne is in the standing position. Kushida has the uh, uh, hoverboard lock on one arm. And then as Pete Dunne's trying to reach the ropes to break the hold, he switches to the other arm and puts that in a lock. I thought that was pretty, pretty a nice little segment, nice little exchange. And then, of course, ultimately, Pete Dunne wins as Kushida sells the fingers being manipulated. He started manipulating uh, Kushida's fingers again. And when Kushida, uh, Kushida tried to punch, uh, well, actually, you know, punches um, Pete Dunne, he ends up, you know, selling the injury of his hand. And that's how Pete Dunne was able to get the win. I thought it was a nice opener match. I don't really know too much about their feud, but I enjoyed it. And the one thing I've always liked about wrestling, like, you may not know about the feud, the feud they've had leading up to it, but if the wrestling is good and the storytelling they tell within the ring is great, you can easily follow along and enjoy it. So this was definitely an enjoyable first match to start off the pay-per-view. All right, the gauntlet match. Most of these wrestlers I do not know in this match. Like I said, I was just going off, you know, the entrances and their names and just trying to follow along the best I could. But I like the fact they were setting this up for whoever wins this match. They basically would face Johnny Gargano for the NXT North American Championship. 
is putting some prestigiousness to the NXT North American Championship. I like little gauntlet, little tournament matches to see who's going to win. I like those type of uh, type of booking or booking decisions for matches. All right, Leon Ruff starts off starts off the match first but was getting attacked by Isaiah Swerve before the match even started you just see him just like you know he's like in pain you know what I'm saying he's just like kind of crawling on the ground people are like what's going on Isaiah Swerve comes from the back you know what I'm saying starts attacking him apparently they have some major beef so it was cool to see their their dynamic at the beginning of the match um their intensity was was top notch like you could you can tell there's like it, it's like a a serious feud with them and hopefully they continue the feud into the next nxt uh takeover pay-per-view because it seems like they legit hate each other from what i can tell from this match um the diving twisting cutter from the announce table was nasty bro uh i i thought um leon rush hitting that that he's on the announce table and he hits that move like and of course, I haven't really been watching NXT, so some of these moves is like super fresh to me. So I'm seeing that, and I'm just like, he hits it on Isaiah Swerve. I'm just like, okay, this is this is nice, man. Like honestly, it should be these two, you know, face, you know, these two should be going at it, and whoever wins out of these two face Johnny, man. I believe Leon did win the NXT North American Championship. I remember that. And Pete, you know, Johnny was basically going off this, uh, off the mindset of like you only won that because of a fluke. He won it, and then oh, he ended up losing it right back to Johnny Gargano. So I do know who Leon Rush is for the most part, just a little bit. Um, let's see. Bronson Reed comes out and catches Leon Ruff and tosses him like he's just common trash. Like Leon Ruff just, he just, he literally jumps from the top rope. Dude is small. Probably smaller than me, damn near. And uh, Bronson catches him. Uh, get this, get this out of here. Just throws him away, bro. Just launches the guy, man. Um, then Bronson sits on Leon Ruff's back and chest, and I definitely said that's a lot of weight. <laughs> Not even gonna lie to you. Uh, I don't know if I would ever want someone of that size sitting like just plopping on my back. Because I'd be having some back pain, you know what I'm saying, from time to time. Or just plopping on my chest. like that. And like I said, Leon Rush is like this goddamn water bottle, bro. It's just like <laughs> barely any weight to the guy. So it's like I I, I definitely have to say that's a, a, a lot of weight moment. Um, Bronson suplexed both Leon and Isaiah. Uh, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. So at this point, I'm starting to remember. At this point, uh, they're both... Like everyone's in this kind of suplex position, and Bronson's at the end, and basically he's he you know he ends up suplexing them both because they're holding on to to each other, and they end up flying across the ring. It was a nice looking spot. Cameron Grimes comes out there, you know what I'm saying, and he pays off Isaiah to work to it like in the middle of the match. Like he he pulls out some money in his from his tights. Like hey bro, hey if you help me, I'll pay you. So he takes the money. Isaiah takes the money, puts it in his tights, and they start working over uh, uh, Leon Ruff and uh, and Bronson. And I'm just sitting there like, bro, like this is this is what we doing now, man. I mean, it, it reminds me. I don't remember this time, but it does give me the like vibes of the Million Dollar Man. That's kind of what his gimmick was was paying off people because he had so much goddamn money. So it. It kind of gives me that vibe, and it was funny just to see that happen. And even when that was happening, like uh, Leon uh, uh, Ruff is getting beat down by Isaiah or whatnot, I don't get why Isaiah ends up throwing the money at Leon. I, I, I was trying to like, bro, man, like, you better keep that money in case you lose the match. At least you come out with some racks, man. And they they were hundred dollar bills, man. Better better keep that money, man. Like what? I'm keeping that. Because at least if I lose, I really won. You know what I'm saying? So, um, at this point, Dexter Loomis comes out. Seems like a crowd favorite. I've seen him a few times on NXT. He's like this stoic character. Doesn't really say much, but looks physically imposing. But he seems like a crowd favorite. He comes out. Uh, Isaiah eliminates uh, Leon uh, Leon Ruff. So, you know, Isaiah gets his one up on him. Uh, Dexter Loomis face off against Bronson. 
They have this, you know, the meeting of the Giants. They're just locking eyes in the middle of the ring, throwing blows. And then L.A. Knight, L.A. Knight, I don't know who this guy is. He comes out talking trash on the mic. Bronson's all, like, up on the entrance ramp just trying to recover. And he ends up kicking Bronson. Like, he just kicks him as he goes to the ramp. Like, get out of here, you piece of trash. He's just talking trash all the way to the ring. I thought it was pretty funny, just his gimmick. Like, I'm really better than all you guys. I'm about to be the next, you know, next best thing when it comes to NXT TakeOver. And then L.A., um... LA Knight starts taking out everyone in the match. He starts gaining, like, this advantage over everyone in the match. Obviously, he's the freshest one because it was, like, a elimination style. So, he was the last one to come out. So, he he was fresher than everybody else. Starts hitting them with high-impact moves. And then, and then LA Knight eliminated Dexter Loomis with, like, a, 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 a roll-up. Like, it was some type of fancy roll-up. Like, Dexter Loomis, I'm, I don't remember exactly. I wish I can, because it, it sucks with Peacock that you can't rewind. Like, when you're watching the stuff live, you can't go back. Like, with WWE on the WWE Network, you can at least go back a few seconds to catch something if you miss. With that, you can't go back, uh, like, go back or rewind unless you missed it live and then you want to rewatch it. That kind of sucks. You need to add that feature. But basically... um. LA Knight ends up um, eliminating Dexter Loomis. Crowd wasn't having it. And then I want to say, uh, I want to say Bronson ends up eliminating LA Knight. He ends up eliminating LA Knight. And then uh, as LA Knight's on the outside of the ring, just, you know, upset, Loomis is still there. He never went to the back. And Loomis puts like a little sleeper hold on LA Knight causes him to finally shut up and go to sleep so i thought that was pretty cool maybe they'll continue some type of feud in the future as well um then bronson grimes and uh isaiah um isaiah swerve they were going at it back and forth back and forth they the last two uh and well no they're not the last two they're the last three in the match bronson grimes and isaiah they were last three in the match they're going back and forth it, you know how the tri- how they have it sometimes in NXT matches or sometimes in, in like these triple threat matches where all three competitors are standing up. They're just throwing blows one after another. Like that's kind of what was happening at this point. Um, let's see where I'm at. Uh, let's see. Bronson Grimes, they were going at it. Then Isaiah eliminated Grimes after he paid him by grabbing the tight. So... Uh, Grimes tried to eliminate Isaiah by grabbing the tights, and then Isaiah ends up rolling him over to grab the tights and ends up eliminating Grimes. And it's it's funny because it's like the dude that Isaiah, you know, Grimes paid him to help him, and ultimately he paid the guy to end up beating him anyway. So I thought that was that was kind of kind of funny, and they um they announced it on commentary as well. So I uh, um. Way better announcing on commentary as well, so I thought that was that was pretty cool. Uh, I want to say next after that, um, this was a nice spot right here. So Isaiah is somehow able to lift up Bronson on the outside of the the ring area, right next to the turnbuckle. Hits him with a like he just flips him over. He flips him over, and as he does. Bronson back lands on the hardest part of the ring, the edge of the ring. He falls down to the mat floor below. And it was just a sick spot because all that weight, no pun intended, just landing on the edge of the ring. You just hear this this thud. Like it was that that was a nice little spot. It, it basically turned the ties into, you know, it turned to tides. You know, at this point, it looked like Isaiah uh, Swerve was gonna win the match. Um Bronson showing heart, even though Isaiah Swerve is just repeatedly giving him kicks in the in his in his dome piece, just straight slaps, straight kicks to the dome piece. I you know, and Bronson's just like, come on, give me some more. He's showing some heart as a you know as a baby face, um, and then ultimately Bronson beat Isaiah, and uh, will end up he ends up he will be facing Johnny Gargano for the North American Championship on um, for tomorrow. And the way he beats him, he ends up hitting him with a 
<laughs> I want to call it the that's a lot of weight splash because I ain't going to lie to you. Someone coming from the second or the top rope and they just splatting on top of me, bro. Not going to lie to you. I'm done for the mat. I'm done for the night. I'm done for the year. I'm not going to be a wrestler anymore. I'm just going to chill. <laughs> that's it. I'm done. I'm d- damn near done with life. If someone of that size just decides to just jump off of something and land on top of me, I'm good. But ultimately, I'm looking forward to their match uh, tomorrow. I think Johnny Gargano is going to put on a fantastic match. He's the heel in this situation. And I think Bronson is going to have a great showing as well. And honestly, booking wise, I would have Johnny lose here. I would have Johnny lose here. I think him being a champion, and you know, he's been he's held the championship for for a while now. I think you know, what I'm saying you build up someone to to win that elimination gauntlet and then have them lose. I I, I don't think so. You know, especially since they're they're kind of going about they you know it seems like they're behind Bronson on this one. I would definitely have Bronson win the match. So that's my thoughts on it. Looking forward to it tomorrow. All right. My favorite match of the night. Sorry. It was my favorite match of the night. I I had a feeling this was going to be my favorite match of the night. But I didn't realize how much it was. This this was a fantastic, hard-hitting match. Walter versus Ciampa for the UK Championship. First and foremost, promo package. Epic. Love the promo package. Basically setting the story that Ciampa's gotten soft. He's a family man now. He doesn't have that same black heart like he used to in 2018. That was one of that heel Ciampa was one of the best Ciampas. Like he was the he, at that point he was what Roman Reigns is now. He was the best heel in WWE. Heel Ciampa, black heart Ciampa was sadistic, and I like the fact that he has this little necklace that you know it reminds him of his family of you know. The children, you know, the children he has, like, just, you know, or what he's fighting for. And Walter rips it off in one of the uh, episodes on NXT. And, you know, it fuels him. You know what I'm saying? So, they're basically setting the story. Can Ciampa get back to 2018 Ciampa? Black heart Ciampa. And I like that. And the simple fact that can we acknowledge the fact that Walter has been the champion for over two years? That is ridiculous. Ridiculous, and I think the other person, the only other person that held that championship just as long was, uh, I want to say, Pete Dunne. He had the championship for a very long time, two years, two years as the flagship holder of a championship. That's incredible, bro. That means whoever beats Walter, they get a mega push in NXT UK. Facts. Like, they are the next guy up. Because you're not going to drop someone holding the belt that long. They're not dropping it to just anybody. So, I thought that was pretty cool just stat-wise. All right. I like when they start listing the wrestlers' intangibles and, you know, what their you know what their strengths are. Um, <laughs> Chumpa's intangibles is he's psychotic. <laughs> that's, that's one of his greatest strengths. He's psychotic. And Walter's intangible is he's been he's unbeaten. No one's ever beaten him in one on one singles competition. So that's their intangibles. One's a psychotic, one's unbeaten. Who wins here? I don't know, man. But um I like that. I thought that was pretty funny. So Chumper started going crazy. Um, like towards the beginning of the match, just you know, you know, old school champions just start stomping on Walter in the corner, and it all stopped with one one knife chop to the chest. Oh my God, Walter's chops! You couldn't pay me no money in the world to take those chops. It literally stopped all of Champa's momentum. Walter goes for a chop uh, on like the outside on the announce table, and he ends up snapping the wood. Of the announce table cover. As he goes for the chop. Chompa moves out the way. And he snaps the wood in half. Selling the injury. Which was still a nice spot. Selling the injury. Like Walter's hand is messed up. You know. So it's going to be hard for him to effectively use the chop. Walter goes for a chop. Oh, I already talked about that. Then Chompa ruefully starts attacking Walter's hand. Obviously. He went for the chop part of the wood table wood uh fixture uh on the nxt announce table so he's gonna go for the injury 
at this point also Walter can't use his hand so when he's trying to use he can't really use the chop like he wants to so he has to use the chop with his left hand is not as strong it's not as uh as like effective and Trump is really ruthless like he's he's biting at his hand he's tearing at his hands trying to bend back the fingers like he's literally making it his mission to do whatever it can it takes to make Walter you know what I'm saying submit or you know cause as much damage to Walter's hand um I want to say Trump started brutalizing Walter and like I want it was like this segment where Walt Trump is running at him like running off the ropes, hitting them, running off the ropes, hitting them. That's all he's doing over and over and over and over. About a good minute, almost a minute and a half. And Walter would not fall, bro. Walter, they they booked him as this unstoppable force that won't fall at all. Um, no matter how many times he was hit by Chompy, he just wouldn't fall to the mat. Then Walter hit him with one knife, like one knife chopped to the chest. And <laughs> Chompa falls down but gets right back up with the intensity. And then Chompa hit the bitter end for a close to fall from the, I want to say, the second top rope. It was like the second top rope. I'm not going to lie to you, man. Uh, that was a really close fall. And they, it looked like he was going to win it. Um, and at that point, I was like, oh, shit, that was, that was, a, that was a real close one right there. It definitely the crowd was amped up. The announced team was amped up. I was amped up at this point. Um, then it's, I want to say it was a nasty German, German release suplex from Walter to Ciampa across the ring. Like he just threw him, like he was trash. I'm like, okay, like they, this Walter, he, he. He is a, a, a formidable opponent, and the fact that he's taking on his punishment basically one-handed and still able to dish out punishment was uh, uh it was it was a nice it was an I, I like that I like to see a champion that has held the belt this long look as strong as he did. Uh, Champa stays going for Walter's right hand, and the fact. And I like, like, uh, the announce team has said the uh, at this point, uh, the fact that Walter hasn't lost a one-on-one -on -one, uh, competition match, it shows in this match. Like, it shows no, it, it's, like, damn near impossible to put Walter away no matter how much punishment you deal to him. Um, Walter starts eating them chops by Chompa. He's just eating them. His chest is red, just constantly just taking the chops and keeps coming back for more. Um... Walter starts going for, uh, oh no, I'm trying to see what I, I had put right here. Cause I was trying to pay attention as much as I could, but at the same time, it's like, it's hard to take notes. And then when the match is really, really good, like to look away, like, you know what I'm saying? So I'm not sure what I was trying to say here, but, uh, at this point, Chomp is still, he's, he's starting to get, you know, he's starting to be on the losing end, but he's not quitting. You know what I'm saying? Like, Walter's hitting him with brutal kicks. He's still kicking out of two. He's still getting back up and fight. He's getting hit by chops. He's still coming back. He still wants more. And, and I put specifically in my notes, I'm loving this match at this point. But ultimately, Walter wins. Um... He wins actually kind of quick. It was it kind of came out of nowhere. He won with a a just a, a regular chop. It was it was literally like a chop to the chest or whatnot, and it was one two three, and that was it. And I'm just like, oh, all right, cool. You know what I'm saying? But I like the fact that he did win clean. I'm I'm glad Imperium didn't get involved, and I, I that was like the theme of the show. Like any time that someone won that was on the heel side of things. They didn't have like their, you know, enforcer or anyone else to help them out. They won clean. I like that. It's it's always it's it's refreshing when the heel actually can win without cheating. You know what I'm saying? Just because they're heel, they don't have to cheat every time. They can beat people clean. So I, I enjoyed that. All right. Now here's where things just get really like I wouldn't say confusing, but I don't really know none of these wrestlers' names. Uh other than the like 
honestly, I don't know none, none of their names like that. So I only go, I only know by the, by their team names. I didn't even know this match was on the card. Um, but uh, when I, like I said, I was just haven't been watching NXT much lately. But this was for the vacated NXT Men's Tag Team Championship. Um. MSK versus the Grizzly, Grizzled Young Vets, who I've seen before a few times. And then Legato Del Fantasma. Never seen them before. Like I said, hey, man, don't don't sue me. Don't get mad. I just hadn't really been kept keeping up with NXT as much. So this was all fresh to me. All of this was fresh, but I enjoyed it. This was actually pretty enjoyable. It has a, Is it the best NXT tag team match I've seen? No, it's not. I've seen some other triple threat tag team matches that were better than this, but definitely this was this was entertaining though, for sure. Um, I put it in my notes. I don't know all their names, and it's hard to keep up. I'm unfamiliar with all these teams. I put that in the notes so I could, you know, let that be known. Hey, I, I don't know, but I'm gonna try to keep up. MSK seems like the major faces in this match because it seemed like um, Legato and. Uh, Obviously, the Grizzle Young Vets, they were in the heels, and apparently the Grizzle Young Vets have some history with MSK and injured one of the team members from MSK, like broke his hand storyline-wise. So I like there's like some rivalry and dynamic there, and it plays into part of the match towards the end. Legato with the synchronized moves look fantastic. The synchronized dives, one goes up top, one goes through the, through the, the, the middle ropes with like a corkscrew spin. I thought that was pretty cool. The coast to coast from Legato to one of the team members, like he had one of the team members from MSK is hung up on the ropes on the turnbuckle. One goes to one corner of the ring, the other goes to the other corner of the ring from the top rope. They both hit him with like some like time. It's not synchronized, but one jumps, hits a coast to coast kick. The other one jumps, hits a coast to coast kick. Thought that was pretty cool. And at this point in the match, they looking like the the overall favorite. Um, lay. Um, they were running the match. I put this in my nose. Legato was running the first part of this match by a mile. They was taking out the Grizzly Young Vets and MSK with ease. Um, but then uh, MSK started coming back with some exciting high flying moves. I like their move set, and I believe I've seen some of their move set in WWE best move reactions. The uh, the past few we've checked out on the in the clutch page so it does look for they do look familiar i just not real versed in them but i would like to see more of them uh the grizzly young bitch um trying to tap out msk in the middle of the ring i like that spot one of the team members from msk is basically trying his hardest to make sure his teammate does not tap out what led to that spot was uh one of the members of msk i guess the guy that recently had his hand broken his hand was stuck in the turnbuckle where one of the grizzle vets had his hand stuck in the turnbuckle he couldn't release it and then the other member of uh the one of the other members from the grizzle young vets drop kicks the turnbuckle apparently you know injuring uh one of the members of msk hand this sounds weird saying one of the members one of the members so at this point this is how they ended in, the, in that submission hold both of them were in the submission hold trying to make sure that one person doesn't tap like they don't make one of one of them don't tap i, I like that spot like basically hey hold on brother man don't tap whatever you do don't tap and then it gets broken up by one of the members of legato and Ultimately, MSK and Grizzly Young Vets essentially take out Legato from the match. It was a nice doomsday. Like this little, there's a rampway connected to the ring. It's all level, and then there's steps to get to the rampway. And they had one of the members of Legato on one of the members of the Grizzly Young Vets' shoulders on the outside, and one of the members from. The Grizzly Young Vets runs all the way past the trophies, past the titles where they're just propped up and hits a nice ass doomsday. And, bro, he falls hard to the hard mat outside. And then on the other end of the ring, bro, I don't even know what that move is called. He has them like on his shoulders. And the dude literally jumps from inside the ring. Hits him while he's on one of his teammates' shoulders, one of the MSK teammates' shoulders. And as he hits him, he flips him face first to the mat below. That looks sick. They out of the match. And it's, it comes down to MSK versus Grizzly Young Vets. Ultimately, 
MSK, they end up winning. They have a nice little standoff, but MSK wins, and they are the new NXT men's uh, tag team champions. And uh, William Regan comes out there, gives them the championship. It was a heartfelt moment, and it seems like they're the crowd favorite. So I would love to see more from them. And uh, I'm like I said, I I'm, I want to see where these tag teams go. I want to get more familiar with them. So I would like to see more from these tag teams. So sorry if I don't really know their names, but hey, man. I'm doing the best I can right now. And the main event, the main event of the night, Io Shirai versus Raquel Gonzalez for the Women's NXT Championship. Um, the promo package was fantastic. I like it. They're building, they've built up Raquel Gonzalez as the next person to hold the belt. I mean, she pinned Io Shirai at War Games. They've been building her as a beast. She hasn't lost a match, I believe. I don't think she's lost like a a one on one match. Like they're building her up as the next big threat. They did the same thing. Where they pretty much. I I know there was a little feud between Rhea Ripley and Raquel, and basically it it, it was the send off for Rhea Ripley to go to the main roster. So Raquel was the next person up, and it it only made sense how the booking played out for this match. So. I didn't know EO was champion for 300 plus days as champion. Uh, I thought that was pretty cool. That was a pretty cool stat. And it, it shows that EO has really been carrying that division. Um, Dakota Kai tries to get involved, which, you know, I, I actually put this in my notes. I said Dakota Kai will get involved in this match. And then as soon as I said that, she tries to attack um, EO on the top turnbuckle. And the ref sees it and pretty much ejects her out of the match, which I was like, all right, cool, bet. I want to see if Raquel can get this on her own. So, um, Gonzalez starts showing her strength against EO. Like, EO has some fast, high-flying moves, but Gonzalez, with, like, she just she has this type of strength where she's just able to throw EO around like it's nothing. So, I, I like the fact that she they, bet, they really played on Gonzalez's strength as her main, her main like factor of uh, being able to defeat EO. You know what I'm saying? Because she's so physically, you know, dominant over her. Um, I will say this, and I said this right before EO's crazy spot. She EO at this point was about to do a moon salt from the top rope to the ramp walkway walkway area where Gonzalez is at. And she hits it, beautiful moonsault. And I'm just, and I put in my notes, EO just does not care about heights. And if it's something tall, she's going to do a moonsault off of it or a cross body off of it. That's just what she is. That that That's who she is. And I, I, I just, I'm, it's amazing to see someone that just literally does not care about heights. She's like Jeff Hardy to me. Like, he, he didn't care about heights. How high? 50 feet? Sign me up. That's literally how EO is. Um, then they cut away. You know, they doing the replays and stuff. And they're still on the rampway area. So EO runs at Gonzalez. Hits with a nice running knee. You know what I'm saying? They're outside the ring area. They cut away, checking out the replays and stuff. You're trying to figure out where EO is. EO had enough time to f- climb up. The, the little skull theme set for Stand and Deliver. She's at the very top of it. And she does a crossbody to Raquel Gonzalez all the way to the steel grate. And you hear, you hear and see like her knees hit the steel grate. The side of her knees hit the steel grate. It looked brutal. I don't even know how EO was able to walk after that. That was a sick spot. I put holy shit in there because that's that's ridiculous. There's no mat. They literally, she literally jumped all the way down to be caught by Raquel Gonzalez to steal hit the steel grates at the entrance ramp. Ridiculous, bro. Then um, she hits the top rope moonsault. EO hits the top rope moonsault and Raquel Gonzalez kicks out. And the announce team says no one has ever kicked out of that. And as soon as they said that, I was like, oh, it's over. She's winning. Raquel Gonzalez is winning. She kicked out of the moonsault top rope finisher move for EO. No one's kicked out of it. She's winning. 
She's winning the match. Like, at that point, I knew she was winning the match, and I said it. It looks like Raquel may be winning this match, booking-wise. And and ultimately, that's what happened. She hits her. Uh, Raquel Gonzalez hits her one-arm uh, power slam to the outside, uh, to the mat floor. And then she also hits it inside the ring after she gave uh, Io a nasty lariat that turned her inside out. She hits her with the one-arm power slam. That's a little finishing move. And Raquel Gonzalez wins the NXT Championship, the Women's NXT Championship, clean. And I love the way they booked it. She didn't need the Kodakai. She won it clean, fair and fair and square, bro. And I like that. It it solidifies her. She doesn't need Dakota to win. She did it on her own. Got the dub. And she is your new women's NXT champion. And it looks like they may be running with her being the next women's NXT champion for a while. Like I said, the way they booked her so far from the stuff I have seen, um, is she's, she was booked like the next Rhea Ripley. And you're not going to book someone that strong for them to lose when it's time for them to go for the championship. So... I thought that was pretty cool, and ultimately, I think that was the right decision. I was okay with pretty much all the booking here. You know what I'm saying? I don't. I didn't have a problem with any of the booking decisions. Um, I didn't think, of course, Tommaso Ciampa was going to win against Walter, but I still enjoyed the booking decision to even have him in that match, and potentially he could have been the first person in NXT history to win the NXT Championship and the nxt uk championship but ultimately i enjoyed night one it was enjoyable i was entertained i didn't know too many wrestlers but i was definitely entertained by this night it was a good few hours of great you know great wrestling in my opinion and of course my favorite match will got to go to Tommaso Ciampa and Walter fantastic match hard hitting definitely enjoyed that match so comment down below let me know what was your favorite match from tonight man let me know what match had you hyped had you entertained throughout the entire match and you know what I'm saying if you guys are looking forward to part two of uh NXT standard deliver I know I am so I appreciate all the love and support Road to four. Oh, damn. I'm tripping. I was about to say 400K. I got to get to 40K first. But that would be cool one day to get to 400K on this channel. But road to 40K. Appreciate y'all kicking it with me. And I'll see y'all on the next one. Peace.